Hello again, everybody. I'm Carl Baldessar, and today we have a really special episode that I want to bring you. And this is something that I kind of wish I would have been able to watch when I was young, because we're going to talk about modes. We're going to talk about demystifying modes. But I'd like to kind of throw in my two cents in terms of a breakthrough method that I had to help me learn and understand modes for the first time. The method that I'm going to be sharing with you, which is the key signature method, that was the method that I was given that finally unlocked the confusing world of modes for me. And the beauty of that method is that you'll finally be able to kind of both see and hear how modes work. And it's really powerful in that regard. You'll also understand how to derive modes quickly. So if somebody says, I want C Phrygian, you won't have to go through a bunch of machinations, say, what do I lower, what do I raise, you know, to find out what a C Phrygian is. So this will help you there. And if you spend time kind of doing the exercises I'm going to share with you, your ear is going to get even more tuned in, just generally in music. So it's great for ear training, and you'll certainly learn key signatures when you do this. And there's not that many to learn, and it's a wonderful thing to have for your future career in music, or even just as a, a novice player. It's wonderful to know what key signatures are. But most importantly for me, one of the biggest benefits, apart from being able to kind of see and understand this stuff, was how to apply it. And we're going to spend a lot of the back part of this lesson in terms of the applied use of modes, because they are a living thing. They're not just a theoretical concept. They are meant to be used and they live. And for me as a composer arranger, if you really want to have some tools in your toolbox to alter what you're doing with your compositions, man, bringing in the modes it gives you a universe, a portfolio of colors that are really, really powerful. And to know what each of those sounds like and just grab that sound and bring it into your writing and arranging is really a game changer. And lastly, this is for all you guitar players like me who suffered and were taught the wrong way on how to do modes. And they remained a mystery and they remained just sort of a, a finger exercise that had no real application. This method is going to help you a lot. And by the way, you'll have to probably practice this on the keyboards. It's really good to see it for first on a keyboard, but then you can bring it back to the guitar. All right, well, the first question we have to answer is, what is a mode? Well, a mode is simply a scale. That's a mode. We just played a mode. And what we're going to do is focus on the seven basic common modes of the major scale. Now, there is going to be a little bit of memorization required to do this. I'm sure you've heard these before, but let's just run down them again, OK? So we have the Ionian mode, which is number one. The Dorian mode is number two. The Phrygian mode is number three. The Lydian mode is number four. The Mixolydian mode is number five. The Aeolian is number six. And the Locrian mode is number seven. You just have to remember those names and the numbers that they represent, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because there are seven notes in a major scale. And all the modes are built off of those numbers with those names. So just memorize those. Now, to help you memorize those, you might need a little mnemonic device to do that. Billy and I have come up with a couple. There are many on the internet. But the couple that we like, I happen to like this one. I do phonics like my Aunt Lucy. <laughs> Billy happens to like, I dial phones like my aquatic lizard. But whatever works for you to remember the seven names of the modes, feel free to use any sort of device that you want. So Billy, my producer, asked me, where the heck do these names come from? And actually, they come from ancient Greece. And often, the mode names were really about people or places. So like the Ionians came from Ionia, and the Phrygians came from Phrygia etc., etc. Much of the history, though, of the modes is somewhat lost in time. But there is research that you can find that will give you some information about the modes, and especially the Phrygian mode from Phrygia and the Phrygian people, because it was a very musical society. It was a very warlike society. And the Phrygian mode at the time was considered to be a warlike mode. And there's a very somber mood that it creates. And we'll demonstrate that in a short bit. OK, so those are the seven names. That's where they come from. Let me just have a quick mention as to what the confusion is about modes, especially from a guitar player's perspective. So when I was taught modes on guitar, I was actually taught to play them in the same key so that you could see the sequence of whole steps and half steps. And that would sound something like this. So I would do Ionian like this. <laughs> just the known major scale. But I was going to do Dorian starting on D and go D to D. And then I was going to do Phrygian E to E and so on and so forth. Now, 
That's okay for maybe learning the sequence of whole steps and half steps of the shape of a mode, but that does nothing to tune your ear to a mode. Now it comes time to actually hear what this method sounds like, okay? And this is going to introduce you to the color of modes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the seven modes. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm doing, but I want you just to listen to the colors as I go from mode to mode. So let's start. So we have the Ionian mode, which is your major scale. We have the Dorian mode. We have the Phrygian mode. We have the Lydian mode. We have the Mixolydian mode. We have the Aeolian mode. We have the Locrian mode. turn back to the Ionian mode. Okay, we'll pause right there. Did you notice the stark contrast in the colors of those modes as we went through them? And did you by chance happen to recognize the different qualities between major and minor in the modes? That's really important to do. So now there's two requirements to actually do what I just did and to actually start to learn the modes the right way. Requirement number one is that we're going to start on the same note for each mode, and therefore the key signatures are going to change. The second requirement is that we're going to pedal in our left hand the tonic of the key of the scale that the mode exists in, okay? So watch, if I want to do the C Ionian mode, the major scale, I'm going to pedal the C, which is the root of the key of C, okay, and the C scale. And I'm playing the modal scale on top of that pedal so you could hear how it kind of bumps up against the tonal center of the key. Now, with those two things in mind, starting on the same note, and then also moving along the key signature for the right mode. Let's go to the second mode. So let's do C Dorian. Okay, we're starting with C. Now you have to ask yourself, what scale, since Dorian is the second mode, what scale is C the second note of? All right, and the answer is going to be B flat. So I'm gonna to have to play the C Dorian mode in the key signature of B flat. And this is where the key signatures come in. You need to know what the signature is for B flat. Well, there's two flats in B flat, right? There's B flat and E flat. So I know that all I have to do starting on C is I gotta be, play a B flat major scale starting on C, flatting B, flatting E, and you're going to get C Dorian. And what is gonna really help illustrate the color of this is that I'm gonna pedal the B flat, which is the tonic of the scale in the key of B flat. So here we go. Ooh, let's listen to that again, it's really, really cool. See, I'm flatting E flat and B flat. Okay, and you'll notice a particular uniqueness to this sound as opposed to the Ionian. Here's the Ionian. Here's the C Dorian. Notice the quality difference from major to minor in the sound of C Dorian. Very powerful, right? So now let's do it for the rest of the modes, okay? We're now gonna do C Phrygian, and you have to ask yourself the same question. We're gonna start on C. And we say, okay, we know Phrygian is the third mode. And you have to ask, okay, what scale is C the third note of? The answer is A flat, A flat major. Okay, C is the third of A flat major. So what we're gonna do is we're going to pedal the A flat because that's the note of the key signature. And I'm gonna play an A flat major scale starting on C and we're gonna hear the color of the Phrygian mode, the warlike mode, here we go. And 
It's that half step move to start with. You notice the first sequence here is a half step. Right? And you see we have the minor third as well, the E flat. Compare that to the Ionian. C Phrygian. This is where it starts to get really interesting when you start applying a mode to an existing chord and melody and to change it from C major to, you start getting really unique universes here, right? We'll keep going just to make sure we got the principle here, okay? The next mode we're gonna do is C Lydian. Again, starting on C, the fourth degree will be the key of G, because C is the, is the fourth of the key of G. So we're gonna play the key signature note. And here we go, Lydian. That is a magical world, right? And you really hear it because I'm pedaling against this G. Notice what happens to the fourth degree. We get this amazing whole tone scale right here, which is so significant to the sound of Lydian. Isn't that amazing, right? Let's continue on. We have the Mixolydian mode, so we're gonna be in the key of F because C is the fifth degree of the F scale. Right? So we're gonna play an F scale starting on C. Here we go. Right. And in the key of F, we have one flat. The key signature is B flat. It has one, one flat in it, so we're gonna play. Mm. It sounds very much like the Ionian, but we change right here. Yeah, and we're gonna to go to the Aeolian, which is going to be the sixth degree, uh, because we have C, which is six and E flat. Notice now that we're in the relative minor of C major, E flat, okay? So I'm gonna pedal the E flat, play an E flat scale, starting on C, here we go. to finish up with the Locrian mode. Now Locrian is the seventh mode. What key signature would C be the seventh degree? Well, that makes it the leading tone, so it's only gonna be a half step below the tonic note. So if we move a half step, we know it's gotta be the key of D flat. So I'm gonna pedal the D flat and play you a C Locrian mode by playing the key signature of D flat with my right hand starting on C. your C Locrian. All right, now the Locrian mode is sort of an unusual mode. It's often considered to be a theoretical mode, meaning that it's not practical for music making. You don't have much repertoire, actually, with the Locrian mode being applied. I took that as a challenge. I actually wrote a chamber piece of music at Abbey Road Studios in London. We'll talk more about that piece later. It's called Holiday on Woodward, and we'll come back to that in a minute. It's a beautiful piece. So one thing I like to do, and I'd recommend that you do this to continue to tune your ear here and learn this method, is just to kind of toggle back and forth between the modes and use this method where you're gonna pedal the note and play in the key signature. Let me just throw some together here for you. So this will be, we'll start with Ionian. Let's jump to Lydian, C Lydian. Mm, let's go over to uh, C Dorian. I mean, the, those color changes are amazing to me, and you can hear kind of the tonal quality changes of the major and minor sounds. Let me give you a quick rundown on those sounds, okay? I'll just play the kind of the opening four notes of each mode, and we'll go through it, and you can hear, and try to listen as I'm playing and say, oh, that sounds major, mm, that sounds a little more minor, right? Let's see what happens when I do that. Okay, we'll do all seven. Here we go, first one, Ionian. C Dorian. C Phrygian, C Lydian, <laughs> C Mixolydian, C Aeolian, and then C Locrian. 
did you hear the major and minor qualities? I should point out in terms of the major and minor tendencies just to explain what a major and minor is. And it's really governed by the third of a triad, okay? So in C Ionian, so I have this triad, and the middle of the triad is the third. And what makes something major is, is it natural or is it lowered? That would be C minor. So listen to the qualities of these modes. Is it major or minor? So you can see with these little four note chords that I'm doing that we're actually toggling between major and minor sounds within the mode because of the function of the third. If, it, if it's E in, in a C mode, or is it E flat? Right? So now we're going to wrap this up kind of where we started, which is to show you applied modes in a famous melody and a famous chord progression, Silent Night. Okay? It's a song we all know. It's a good way to kind of practice modes. And what I'm going to do is kind of just run through the basic melody figure and put it through four modes just to show you the power of the color and the moods of modes. Okay? So we've got, um, we've got Silent Night, which you know, has this kind of famous, real well-known melody of... Right, so that's C Ionian, okay? Now, if we wanted to run it through a C Dorian color, what are we gonna do? Well, we have a chord, right? And we have a melody. So the first thing we have to do is we have to affect both ends of this spectrum, right? So if you had a piece in kind of C major like this, you're gonna have to deal with the key signature. So we're gonna be C Dorian. C is the second note of B flat major. So in B flat, we got a B flat and an E flat. So if I wanted to play this chord in C Dorian, that C major is going to become C minor, okay? Because we have to lower the E flat to the E flat, right? Now, when we look at the melody, that takes care of the chord. And when we look at the melody, we're going to have to look at the melody notes. So we have, we have here a G, an A, and an E. We know by virtue of the key signature of B flat that we're gonna have to lower the E, so we're going to get this. Let's compare it to the Ionian. One shift of a mode takes us from the hallowed Silent Night Beautiful to the C. Dorian Silent Night, which is a little sad, right? It uh, even gets a little sadder with C Phrygian because now, although our chord stays the same, okay, in Phrygian we're in the key of A flat. So our melody, which originally was G, A, E, we now have two notes of that melody that are affected by the key signature of A flat for C Phrygian. And that's going to be the A flat and the E flat. So let's take a look at C Phrygian Silent Night. So we'll put them all together so you can hear the color change. We have C Ionian, C Dorian, and then C Phrygian. There's your warlike mode. <laughs> oh, it's very, very somber. Versus even the C Dorian. C Phrygian. So these impacts that the modes have on melody and harmony, which is what makes it difficult to do on guitar, because you can't really accompany yourself that easily. You can, but it's not as easy. That's why it's important to do this on the keyboard so you can hear these color changes, these modality changes of major and minor. Uh, let's take a look at one last one here to really uh, disrupt uh, Silent Night. Let's take a look at uh, C Locrian. That is a long way from, <laughs> that's a long way to get to see Locrian, right? The opposite end of the world. Now I mentioned earlier that the Locrian mode is often considered to be just a theoretical what? mode. What? Huh? What? No, no, no. Billy Brock, it, it, everyone. It, hello, everybody. Locrian is not a theoretical mode. Actually, I have this album. 
by my buddy. Who's this guy? Do, do you know who this is? This is uh, <laughs> you, you might recognize him. Shameless promotion, Billy. But, what do we have here? One of these, one, why don't you show him? One of these tracks has Locrian. By God, it is Locrian. <laughs> <laughs> what we have here is actually me composing 10 different settings of Silent Night. And I took this to Abbey Road Studios, worked with a variety of chamber orchestral settings, and I set Silent Night to 10 different modal settings. And I did some pretty exotic things. We've got octatonic, we've got uh, negative harmony, we have many of the modes I discussed, and not the least of which, there's a setting here in Locri mode called Holiday on Woodward. And as a bonus feature, at the end of this episode, you're going to hear the full recording of Holiday on Woodward, and you'll get a chance to follow along the master orchestral score so you can see what the conductor, Rick Wentworth, was looking at as he was conducting these musicians. You'll see all their parts, and I have to say, these are some of the greatest Philharmonic symphonic players in all of the world. Actually, the performance that was the final recording, I think, was their second read-through of the score, and they read this on site. They'd never heard it before, they never saw it before, and they immediately performed it fantastically. So I hope you enjoy that. And don't forget to go to the website and find my album, Silent Night, which has these 10 different types of modal settings. There's a lot of really cool things on there, and we really push the limits on what's possible, both in chamber orchestra settings and in harmony. I'm also going to make available my lesson for Demystifying Modes Part 1, and there's going to be a Part 2, but in this content, which you can find available on my website, and all the proceeds will really go to support the channel, so I really appreciate that, but you're going to find a lot of content in here. You're not only going to get the lesson outline, you're going to get several charts, including those that will show you all the modes in modal order by key signature and scale degree. You're going to see modes by brightness to darkness, that would be Lydian to Locrian. You're going to see modes in interval sequence, including the whole steps and half steps that characterize each mode. In addition, there's a bunch of exhibits in here which are really helpful because they're in sheet music form, so you'll be able to see the sheet music of the seven modes by key signature, which are all starting on C in my lesson. You'll see sheet music for the modes by brightness to darkness. You'll also see modes by interval sequence in sheet music form. And there's also an exhibit which will be discussed in my part two episode here, but it's going to be about tetrachords and inversions. And some of the stuff in that part of the lesson is going to be absolutely mind-blowing. So be sure that you subscribe to my channel and keep a lookout for part two of this episode. I also include in the lesson seven separate scores for each of the seven modes of Silent Night. So you can see how the modes will impact both the chords and the melody in each of the seven modes. And lastly, you're going to have the master score of the recording of Holiday on Woodward. And this will be a really good one for you to dig into to actually see how an arrangement then, an orchestral arrangement is wrapped around a modal setting.
And there you have it, part one of Demystifying Modes. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. We'll be back again with part two. Please like and subscribe. We really appreciate the subscriptions because they really help us keep this channel going. So until I see you again, I'm Carl Baldessar.